when we start to look at the way robots are heading, they're starting to engage more directly with people. They're out of the factory. They're now where people are working. And they're also doing a lot more. Hey guys, welcome to Meta Toolbox, the video interview series where you try to save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time. And today we're going to be starting to build a robot. To help us do that, we've brought on Rob Woolley, who is the principal technologist in the technology office at Wind River. How are you doing, Rob? I'm doing well. Very good. So one of the challenges today with building an intelligent robot is that the intelligence is often or has traditionally been intelligence that was created or originally conceptualized in the data center and enterprise environments and IT systems, but by their very nature, a lot of these robots are operating out at the edge in industrial environments and healthcare environments, uh, maybe as a commercial service uh, robot. And those, by their very nature, have to have a lot of embedded technologies in them. So I want to know, is it possible for you to have a robotic system that uses all of these technologies that operates completely alone at the edge, isolated, cut off, independent of any sort of cloud data center infrastructure? That's a great question. There are a lot of traditional robots that sort of worked in isolation and were in certain uh, constrained environments. And when we start to look at the way robots are heading, they're starting to engage more directly with people. They're out of the factory. They're now where people are working. And they're also doing a lot more because with the extra compute power, you want to run additional services on the robot. And rather than doing one task, it might have many tasks that it can perform. And it becomes really important to be able to um, still keep that safety critical nature in the robot but also take advantage of all of these intelligent systems that people want to create. So if you are able to have these platforms that are running independent, at least in some, in some capacity from, you know, these enterprise IT data center type environments, you are talking about a system that is an edge system, perhaps built on enterprise technology, but disconnected from it in one way or another. And it's also comprised of a whole bunch of traditional embedded technologies, which those guys who developed the, those, those AI and the other services type applications aren't familiar with at all. How are you bridging the gap in these converged infrastructure solutions, these intelligent systems that reside somewhere between the far edge and you know, the, the, the data center enterprise cloud? That's a great question. Some of these services do have a safety critical element to them. Others have a deterministic element, but other ones um, may not have either requirements. They, they may um, be perfectly fine with talking to some far cloud device in order to take advantage of the extra resources in the cloud. The key is being able to identify what these services are and make sure to be able to separate the resources on the robot. So those services that have those hard constraints have access to the resources they need to meet those requirements. That's great. So um, historically, Wind River has created a lot of, of really embedded technologies for aerospace and defense, for industrial, for medical, um, one of them being a real-time operating system, the X-Works. Uh, really quickly, can you tell us, Rob, what the function of a real-time operating system like VXWorks would be in this sort of advanced robotic system? And then things that are happening to evolve a real-time operating system to support all of these new different types of technology that are being integrated from non-traditional embedded environments into these platforms. The two key reasons you'd want to use VxWorks in this robotic type environment is for the safety critical certification, the ability to meet those standards for producing something that's going to be used in medical or industrial or automotive or avionics, um, as well as the real-time determinism. So if you have a task that needs to be performed and it requires a certain level of precision or immediate response time, then um, that's really where VxWorks shines. And over the past two decades, we've also been addressing a lot of the new demands coming in. So VxWorks has been adding support for new languages, as well as keeping up to date with the new specifications for C and C++. 
and also just adding new software like the ROS2 framework on top of VXWorks. And all of that is made possible, well, at least some of it's made possible using technologies like containers. What's the role of containers in this type of robotic system build? And you know, how does it interact with a, a real-time operating system like VXWorks? When you have multiple services running on a robot, you want to be able to have them operate independently of each other and not interfere with each other. And you also want to be able to update those components, not only to keep um, the software up to date on one device, but also to make sure that all of the devices that you're managing um, are running the same software and are up to date. So the VxWorks container technology actually allows you to add more software and keep it under control and deal with the complexity. Very good. Well, at the top, I promised that we'd start building a robot. So Rob, do you want to help us kick that off? Uh, set the table for the next few episodes of Embedded Toolbox where we're going to actually build one? Sure, I'd be happy to. We'll start by launching QMU to run VxWorks inside of a Hyper-V virtual machine on our development host. This is going to launch the VxWorks kernel image that we created in our MyVSB and MyVIP project, which has been configured for VxWorks containers with the container runtime and the container manager. With that launched, we're going to start another session And from here, we're going to run all of our commands. We'll start by running the I command to look at the tasks running on the system. And we'll notice that the VxWorks container daemon is running in the background. This is the container runtime that launches all the containers and allows you to, to start and stop containers on the system. We'll enter the command shell. And from here, we're going to unpack a container that we included in the RAMFS built into the image. This is just a simple hello world example and it's currently stored in the OCI format which is a tarball format and we're extracting this to our RAM disk so that we can execute it. If we look inside the RAM disk we see that it has the root file system as well as a config JSON file to tell it how to launch the container. If we look inside, we'll see in the rootfs, there's a bin directory with a simple Python script. This is the entry point for the container. Now if we actually launch that, using the run command, we get the hello world prompt. So what has happened is the container's been instantiated, it ran the entry point, which ran the Python runtime, and executed our simple hello world.py Python script. So that's how easy it is to run containers. Let's now see how easy it is to build your own containers. Let's open up the development shell, and this puts us inside of the, the environment shell inside of our workspace. And we're going to copy some examples that are already present in the install. Now that we've copied those examples, let's go and build the web server example. So to build this example, it's as easy as just specifying the VSB that you want to build it with and the make file will take care of the rest. So behind the scenes this is actually going to invoke the toolchain that we provide with VxWorks and build a simple application for, um, for VxWorks and then it's going to go and turn it into an OCI container. Now the output of this is going to be put into the VSP directory. Let's go check that out. And 
and here's our OCI container. Now we want to be able to export that and we're going to use the build a command um, from our Ubuntu Windows Subsystem for Linux um, image and we're going to pull that locally by running this command. So now it's present within the um, the cache inside of our WSL and now we're going to run another WSL command and we're going to push this to Docker Hub. Great. Now that's on Docker Hub. Let's go back to our VxWorks image and we'll see that we currently have the Hello container present. And now we're going to pull down the other container from Docker Hub. Now that we have it locally, let's unpack it again. And we'll unpack it into our RAM disk. And let's execute this new container. This new container has a Python web server inside and it's now running on port 888. So we'll go to Google Chrome and just go to port 8888 on our local host. And there we go. We now have run a web server written in Python inside of a container that we retrieved from Docker Hub and running on VxWorks. So Rob, there are a whole lot of threads that we're going to start uh, tie, having to tie together over the course of the next few episodes. And I just want to make sure that they all actually do get tied together. So what is the role of all of these containers that we're building on top of VxWorks to the rest of the robotic system build? In this episode, we're focused really on VxWorks and the container technology and being able to um, see the direction that our tosses are heading as they become intelligent systems. And in the rest of the series, we're going to be looking at things like how uh, VxWorks can be adopted by application developers to make it easier to add AI and ML um, applications onto an RTOS without getting into traditional embedded platform development. And then beyond that, we're going to be looking at taking the robot operating system framework to provide um, a robot APIs on top of VxWorks so that VxWorks can be the real-time operating system used by all of your robot devices. Before we move on, I just want to make sure that for all of our traditional embedded developers, they aren't like, oh no, what have you done to our beloved VxWorks, right? Is, has much changed in the actual real-time operating system or, or is there an evolution that is underway? That's a great question. The VxWorks downloadable kernel modules and real-time processes um, are still there and you can still take advantage of them as you always have. What the container technology really allows you to do is take those real-time processes and deploy them in a new way so that it's easy to integrate with any additional systems that you might need to integrate with going forward. Moreover, for people that have always embraced the real-time processes, the containers actually give you a new way of keeping all of your services separate. So not only is it easier to deploy them, but it's easier to make sure that if you update one piece, you don't impact the other pieces as well. So Rob, for the viewers out there who are interested in finding out more about VxWorks containers and VxWorks in general and how it can be used in intelligent converged infrastructure systems like advanced robotics, where should they go? 
check out windriver.com. We recently refreshed our website and has a lot of useful information, but also reach out to someone in product management or field engineering. They'd be happy to address any of the questions you might have and help you go on a deep dive into the VxWorks container technology.